Let's have a look at the jog feature in the sheet metal toolbar. So let's select the option, select a face. Now we need to select a line to draw our jog. Have our line. Let's let's set the line dimension. So go to smart dimension and constrain 40 mil. Okay. And here is the line we're going to construct our jog feature around. So let's select a fixed face and an initial feature pops up. At the moment, the feature is at 45 degrees. We can turn on and off the default bend radius. I'm changing it to five, but we can change it back. And the, the default is basically defined by um, how you should set up the sheet metal part. So we can change the dimension position. We have three set positions. So all based around the six men, six millimeter D1 position. And we can turn off the fixed projected length, which realistically, it gives us a more realistic part. This is a sheet metal part that's going to be bent up into shape so it's not going to continue to be the full length of the metal part so you can see with the different types of bend you get a different length section when it's bent up we also have different jog positions and they're easy to show at 90 degrees so the middle curve going straight through the curve and then we have an option where we follow the rear of the upstand. Another option where we follow the front edge of the upstand. And the final one right at the start of the very first curve on the line. Okay, let's put back to a default position. Okay, and here is our, uh, our jog. Let's try another one. Let's draw on this second metal finger. A line again across. We constrain it with a dimension, 40 millimeters. And this time I'm going to select a different fixed face just to show the difference in the output you get. So, yeah, you, you've the, the fixed face is now at the opposite end and it produces a vastly different shape. So you need to be very aware uh, which fixed face you select to construct your jog feature. So all the same settings comes up with a completely different jog in a completely different position, all because we selected a different fixed face. Let's go back in and edit and change back, change our fixed face to the edge that we know. Okay, just to show, it would have been identical apart from the fixed face. We can reverse, simple as this, and you have a reversal of the same edge. Let me finish by showing you something that you can't do with the jog feature. So if we wanted to make two curves in one go, let's say by trying two lines, you'll see that if this will not work because this is the wrong feature for this job. So just to show you, two lines, The jog feature can only be created from a sketch with a single line. So, and there we have it. There are, there are ways around this. So, instead of a jog, we can try a sketch bend. So, let's just select the sketch bend option. I'm going to just pick a face. And here we have a sketch bend. 
but we'll talk more about this in the next section of the video. OK, so let's take a look at the sketch bend feature in the sheet metal toolbar. So let's select the feature. Now we need to find a face to sketch on. And we'll draw a line across that face. Let's put in a second line. OK and then add some dimensions, just so that we've got some control over the positioning of these lines. Let's make them equal. OK. Right, so then we go to the toolbar, and we have various different options. We can go inside, outside, bend outside. We can use our default radius, which is set by the sheet metal part, and we can change the angle. So let's try 45 degrees. We need to pick a face. So this is the face and the black dot designates that this is the non-moving section. So everything will bend around it. So there are two 45 degree corners based around the lines that we drew on the item. Let's try adding a jog. So if we sketch a line, and a second line using the jog feature, and we try to do the same thing as before. So let's add those dimensions in. So equal spacing. We're going to find that this feature is going to fall over. The jog feature can only be created from a sketch with a single line. So this is the difference between the jog feature and the sketch bend feature. The jog will just allow you to make one, one curve, whereas the sketch bend you can do multiple. Okay, let's have a look at the cross break feature in the sheet metal toolbar. So here we have a box sheet metal part, and we're going to apply a few cross breaks. So simply selecting the face will apply a graphical representation of a cross break. Now the cross break is basically an area um, that could be imprinted for an extra kind of section of reinforcement. Um, if you have long sections of sheet metal ducting like this, you might want to apply a cross break just to kind of break up the long section uh, to add some reinforcing. So it's basically an imprint. I'm just applying a third cross break. So we've got three imprints on the sheet metal part. If we go ahead and flatten the part, the graphical representation is maintained. So you can see one, two, three cross breaks along the with interspaced by the bend edges. Let's delete the cross breaks. There are other ways of applying cross breaks. If you don't want to apply your section across the entire wall, you can use template sketches. So here I've set up a template sketch. I've predefined my sketch along this face, and I want to apply two cross breaks. So, not the sheet metal toolbar, we need to go to get out the sketch. In fact, it is the sheet metal toolbar. Applying the cross break.
actually, no, this isn't true. We need to get out of this feature because the first thing we need to do is we need to apply a split. So let's reposition. Here's our sketch. Let's go to mold tools and let's go to split line. So we already have the sketch selected. Let's now select the face we want to split. It's a projection. Here we are. So we have two split sections from this face. So here you can see the sketch. So let's go back and have a look at our sheet metal toolbar. Go back to cross break. Select the split faces. Let's do them one at a time. Can't select our second one at this stage. So there's one cross break, two cross breaks, and so we've got a graphical representation of two cross breaks across our sheet metal part, which could be, depending on your circumstance, a little bit more realistic. Set up a second template sketch for the base and another one for the other side. So back to mold tools, applying the split lines, picking the sketches, picking the faces. We've got our side splits. Let's do the same for the base. You can see the sketches are present. Now let's finish these off. Sheet metal, cross break, select the faces one by one. Then we have a slightly different representation of how the part might look. Again, you can see there's no actual imprinted geometry. But the cross breaks do appear on the flat sheet metal item. There are other ways that we can apply a cross break. So let's start all over again. And here I have a partly modified section which we've applied a cross break via a forming tool. So you can take your forming tool which we've pre-made, applied it to the wrong face, it needs to go on the inside, you need to line it up. It needs to realign. Kind of cheating here because I've pre pre made a template sketch to a line too. So we just pick our alignment points. And my cross break lines up. And this is not a graphical representation, this is an actual physical imprint. And I made the same mistake again. Let's change the face. We need it to be on the inside so it's facing outwards, so it's an imprint pushing out. That's a line. What I've really done is when I've produced the forming tool, it's a line from the center, and then I've just sketched a template on the face which also has a mark through a center line.
So you just need to think about what geometry you want to line your your forming tool up against. That didn't quite work out. Let's try that again. Let's place that on the inside. Can be tricky to select sometimes. Let's just get the right points, put them together. That looks a bit better. And here we have our two cross breaks. And you can see the sketch that I used. I used the same template sketch as before, basically, and just aligned by the middle. So if I turn this around, you can see that there is actually a representation of the form that's been imprinted into the sheet metal part. And the, uh, obviously I've, I've done the base and I've done the other side prior to this. And that's a couple of different ways to produce a cross break on a sheet metal part.